Okay, now, so inshallah, we're going to speak about Hamzatul Qata, which translated means the dividing Hamza. Literally, Qata means to cut. And we'll find out why it has this name, inshallah. Now, before we talk about it, what is its sign? Now, the sign that scholars have given this is if we take the Ain, the last letter of the word Qata, and separate it. So we get the Ain on its own. And this top part here is actually Hamzatul Qata. So it's this. Hamzatul Qata can be written in four possible ways. In the four possible ways, there will always be this, the Hamza. But how it's written changes. Now let's look at some words that have Hamzatul Qata. And we can see actually that we can have the Hamza all alone over here. As in the word Aisha. We can also have it on top of an Alif. Now what Harakah is on top of the Hamza is irrelevant. It could be either one. It doesn't matter if it's a Dhamma, a Fatha or a Kasra. But for example, with the Alif, if there was a Dhamma, the Hamza would still be on top. So for example, like that. If, for example, it had a Kasra with the Alif, then you'd put the actual Hamza below it and then put the Kasra there. And similarly with the wow and the ya. So we'll find out also that a hamza can be together with a wow and a ya without the two dots. And if, for example, these actually have a dhamma or a fatha or even a sukun, as in this case, the hamza will be written on top of the wow and on top of the ya. However, in the case of the kasra, it will be written below. So we'll have the Hamza below with the Kasras. So anyway, getting back to here. Let's just wipe this out. So we can see the four possible ways there. Being alone, with a alif, with a wow, and with a ya. Now, for example, now let's say we have the Hamza alone. We have the Hamza with an alif the Hamza with a wow and the Hamza with a ya and let's give all these the same harakah let's say the Dhamma each of these will be pronounced each of these will be pronounced as a U sound so U U U U so the question is, if this occurs in a word, how do we know how to write it, if there's four possible ways? Another point is that the Hamzat al-Qata can be in any position. And this is different from the other Hamza that we'll speak about later on. So it can be in the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, or at the end. Let's speak about how to write the Hamza. Here we have five words, the same words. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how the Hamza is written. Now what I'm explaining here is a general rule. There are exceptions to it. But generally speaking, this is how you go about doing this. Is you look at the haraka before. So here, for example, the, we have the Hamza. Before it is a Fatha. If Fatha is before the Hamza, then the Hamza is written on an Alif. As you can see here. Now when we have a letter that has a sukun, as in these two words here, Aisha and Daw. So here the elongation, Aisha, the long vowel, but here is actually a sukun. And when this happens, the Hamza is all alone by itself, in both of these cases. Here Aisha means the time of the night when the light disappears, and Daw which means light. Tara'a means he read. Next we have the Hamza, and before the Hamza is a Dhamma. Now when this happens, the Hamza gets a wow. 
So mu'min, a believer. And finally, qari' before it is the kasra, and therefore it gets a ya. So to sum up, if we have a fatha, let's just uh, put a line here. If we have a fatha before the hamza gets an alif, if we have a little with a sukun, the hamza is all alone. If it has a dhamma before, the hamza gets a wow. And if the letter before the hamza is a kasra, then the hamza is associated with the ya, without the two dots, as in here. So here, qari' means one who recites, and qara'a means he read. Now the question, why do they call it the dividing hamza or the cutting hamza? Let's do an example of this. So here we have the sentence, Ja'a Muhammadun wa Ahmadu. That Muhammad and Ahmad came. Now the reason why it's called the dividing hamza is because it divides the word before it. So when they're pronounced, they're pronounced as two separate words. Wa and Ahmadu. This hamza al is always pronounced, regardless of its position in the sentence. As opposed to the other hamza we'll speak about later, inshallah. So, just finally, here we have the verb ja'a. So, notice here, we have an elongation of the alif. Here is a sukun, actually. So, when there's an elongation, there's a sukun there. And because there's a sukun before the hamza, the hamza is written all alone. So, that's briefly about hamza al-qata'. And next lesson, we'll speak about hamza al-wasl, inshallah.